This is Rhea. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I have a guest! I know, I'm excited too. Now, my studio is currently filled with teacups given to me by my neighbor who was an antique teacup collector but recently decided to move to Antarctica and couldn't take more than what she could fit in a backpack. So she gifted me all of her teacups, and here we are. Don't worry, it makes total sense. The teacups make it slightly crowded in my very small studio, so I had to invite the kind of guest who wouldn't need much room. Thankfully, my very own basement is home to many such creatures, namely camel crickets. If you aren't familiar with camel crickets, hmm, how shall I describe them? They are terrifying. <clears throat> Sorry, did I say terrifying? I meant charming. They are just so charming. The way you can't really see where they are because they blend into whatever thing they happen to be perched on, like the floor or a laundry basket you intend to pick up. Then they leap at you in a kind of aggressively affectionate sort of way. Not in a way that would make you, I don't know, shriek and run out of the room. Now, I'll admit the camel crickets and I have had our differences. Mainly, we've disagreed about whether they should, in fact, live in my basement. I tend to think they should not live in my basement, and they tend to think that they should. So it's out of enormous generosity and willingness to mend fences on my part that I've invited one of these awfully lovely creatures to be my guest for this story. So here he is, all the way from my basement, Antonio the Camel Cricket. Welcome, Antonio. Yeah, you can just sit yourself way over there. That's Great. Now, remember the one rule, right? Okay, good. We'll be just fine as long as you don't... No, 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 no. What? Why are you jumping? We talked about this. Okay, but don't jump anywhere near the... Teacups. Why? Why did you jump? That was the one rule. Oh, no. Now I can't even see him. He's blending him with the carpet. Antonio? Uh, as I've said, we've had our differences. Oh, there you are. Look, Antonio, um, you know what? Let's just get to the story, okay? And, and just, please, no more jumping. Because if you leap around while I'm telling the story, I won't be able to focus. Okay? Okay. Tiny people, I will deal with this challenging situation that I could not possibly have predicted for all of you. Our story today is called Little Hedgehog and the Tunnel. Let's get to it. Take it away, Simone. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, let's go. Little Hedgehog, can you free me from this bulletin board? It was a Saturday night. Little Hedgehog and BB, her best friend of all time, were in Little Hedgehog's room. Earlier in the night, as they were searching for fairies outside, Cecil, Little Hedgehog's neighbor, offered them a large cork bulletin board he no longer needed. I'll have to find a different place to display all my kettlebell exercise certificates, Cecil said. Cecil was also a hedgehog. His pet cricket sat on his shoulder, blinking. Jermaine number eight doesn't much enjoy the cork bulletin board. Isn't that right, Jermaine? Cecil said, glancing at his cricket. I don't enjoy it, no. I prefer science fiction trilogy novels. That's right, Jermaine. Cecil looked to his neighbors. So, would you like it or not? Little Hedgehog and BB nodded and clapped their teensy paws together. Cecil brought out the bulletin board. Thank 
like you. We're most grateful, Mr. Cecil. Now then, if you'll excuse us, we left off on page 87 of Jermaine's Choice of Science Fiction Trilogy Novel. Little Hedgehog and BB dragged the bulletin board all the way from Cecil's burrow, which was no small feat for two very tiny hedgehogs. They'd propped it up against a wall. As BB stepped away from it, her tiny foot rolled on top of a glow-in-the-dark marble, and she went flying backwards. Her prickles sank into the cork of the bulletin board, trapping her. Ah! Little Hedgehog turned to see BB flailing her tiny paws as she remained fixed to the board. Little Hedgehog giggled. <gasps> oh, BB! It was my secret plan to trap you on my bulletin board so you can never leave me again. BB smiled. Oh me, oh my. I am adhered to this board made of sustainably sourced material as a prisoner of my cheerfully diabolical best friend. They both giggled. It's creative, I'll give you that. Dad was in the doorway. Although, there are other ways to get Bibi to stay over, little hedgehog. Hey, Dad. Good evening, Mr. Hedgehog. Hey, Bibi. Dad, can you help me free Bibi from this cork board that attacked her without warning? Bibi smiled. Yes, Mr. Hedgehog. Please save me from this sinister bulletin board. Together, little hedgehog and her dad carefully plucked Bibi's prickles from the cork. She sighed with relief. I convey to you my sincerest thanks. Bibi, you have unusually prickly prickles. Strong, too. Why, thank you, Mr. Hedgehog. I cannot take credit for the strength of my prickles. My mom says I come from a long line of strong prickled hedgehogs. My great, 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 great Aunt Vidalia once unpinned herself from beneath an itinerant hippo With the strength of her prickles alone, she was 102 at the time, and she only had one leg. As for the prickliness, that is likely due to the teaspoon of bee pollen I ingest in capsule form every Monday at twilight. Mr. Hedgehog peered at BB. Never change, BB. Okay. Hey, so I have some things I need to do tonight, so I'm gonna go do those. Try not to get yourself stuck to any more furniture. Okay, bye, Dad. Au revoir, Mr. Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog, where do you think we should hang this dangerous bulletin board? Bibi asked as she picked up the -the glow-in-the-dark marble she'd slipped on and returned it to its pouch on the bookcase. Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's move my bookcase over and put the bulletin board there. That way, when we fill the board with pictures of our adventures, I can see them from my bed as I fall asleep. Excellent idea. Little Hedgehog and BB began to push the bookcase with their tiny paws. It didn't budge. BB, <gasps> what if you push with your extra strong prickles? BB turned around and pressed her iron like prickles against the bookcase. She gave one big push, and the bookcase moved about a foot. Little Hedgehog's eyes went wide with excitement. Yay! Yay! Hey, wait a minute. Little Hedgehog scampered over. BB, (gasps) what is that? In the very spot where the bookcase had once stood, before BB used her shockingly strong prickles to shift it, was the entrance to a tunnel. Little Hedgehog and BB stood on either side and stared into the deep dark of the tunnel. Where do you think it leads? <gasps> Maybe it's a portal to a magical world where all the trees grow those socks that have the toes on them. Toe socks. Yes, and where hedgehogs ride on elephants that can read spiders' thoughts. Maybe it's a portal to a magical realm where all of the animals wear wooden clogs and live in geodesic yurts. Maybe it leads to an underground pond where there are (gasps) mer-hedgehogs. 
Little Hedgehog and Bibi came up with a few more guesses as to where the tunnel might lead. A mushroom throat lozenge factory. A honey badger anger management retreat. Then packed up some supplies for their travels. It was so obvious, it didn't even require a discussion. They were headed into the tunnel. As they left, Bibi grabbed the marble pouch off the bookshelf and tucked it into her prickles. As soon as they were a few feet inside, it became clear they would not be reaching their destination anytime soon. Absolute darkness stretched out before them. There was nothing to see. They kept going. At some point, they came upon a small bug heading in the same direction. Why, hello! Greetings. The bug didn't respond. They tried again. Hi there! Greetings. The bug reached up and pulled off its headphones. Oh, hi. Were you addressing me? Yes. We were. Sorry, I was listening to an audio documentary about igneous rocks. Oh, okay. Is it the one called The Rock That Was Magma Before It Was Cool? Yeah, that's the one. The, the one that was produced by the same ferret that made Otter Chaos, the definitive audio documentary about discord among otters? Yep, that's the one. I haven't heard it yet. It's in my queue. There was a moment of silence. We were wondering if you knew where this tunnel leads. The bug blinked. For example, does it lead to a magical land where hedgehogs ride on telepathic elephants and sparkly toe socks grow on all the trees? Or to an underground pond filled with myrrh hedgehogs? Or to a mushroom throat lozenge factory? Or to a retreat where honey badgers learn to channel their enormous power and intellect towards positive endeavors. Finally, Little Hedgehog and BB fell silent. Up ahead, they heard a lone cricket chirping inside the tunnel. After what felt like minutes, the bug spoke. This is a tunnel? Oh, that, that explains a lot. The bug nodded goodbye and put his headphones back on. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look, then continued on. They traveled over slippery rocks. At points, the tunnel narrowed so that they had to stoop to continue. But at no point did they think about turning around. At long last, they heard voices up ahead. They also heard music. And they stepped into the light. Little Hedgehog and Bibi's eyes went wide. The tunnel had opened up into an enormous cavern with an underground lake. They clapped their teensy paws together with excitement and gazed around in wonder. Bibi, what is this place? It appears to be a cave lake, complete with recreational water activities and a live band. A small rat paddled by in a canoe, singing as he went. There were dozens of canoes, tracing through the water, shimmering by the light of lanterns all along the banks of the lake. A muskrat on an inner tube floated by, eating a bright orange popsicle. A small rabbit dashed past on water skis, pulled by some unseen creature swimming through the lake. A crow sped by on a pedal kayak. A band of rodent musicians performed at the lake's edge. Hey kids, what can I get you? Little Hedgehog and BB turned to see a largish hedgehog standing behind a counter. We've got uh, canoe rentals, inner tubes, unicorn inner tubes, snorkeling equipment, kayaks, and some scuba gear. But I'd probably stay away from that given your size. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. This also doubles as my accounting office, so uh, if you need your taxes done, 
I can do that for you too. The hedgehog pointed a paw at a small sign that read, We also do taxes. Bibi's eyes lit up. Um, all that sounds enchanting. We were just wondering if you are a mer hedgehog by any chance. Only in my dreams, kid. Only in my dreams. I will take an inner two, please. I will do the same. Thank you. The hedgehog reached down and came up with two tiny life jackets and two inner tubes. As they were getting themselves ready for the water, the bug from the tunnel appeared. He took off his headphones and stared. Whoa. The largish hedgehog turned to the bug. Hey, kid, what can I get you? You want a leaf board? I've got one for your size. Also, if you need your taxes done... I can do that for you, Little Hedgehog and BB scampered over to the edge of the lake and launched their inner tubes. They floated out into the middle of the water, dodging a large group of mice participating in a synchronized water dancing class. A graceful mouse dance teacher perched above them on a paddleboard, directing their movements. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Now, pause. No, 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 no. Don't stop. Put your paws up. Now, jazz paws. Paolo, put a little more jazz in your paws, please. Little Hedgehog and BB giggled as they drifted towards the middle of the lake. It was the perfect night. It was almost too perfect, with the music, the atmosphere, the lake filled with happy animals gliding through the water. BB. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That it's strange we've never known there was a tunnel that went directly from your burrow to an underground lake with water activity rental equipment and a joyous atmosphere? No. That it doesn't seem possible for that sailboat over there to be sailing, given that there is no wind inside this cavern? Yet it is sailing, and that presents a challenge to our current understanding of physics. No. That that squirrel over there bears an uncanny resemblance to our gym teacher, Mr. Tuttles. Little Hedgehog twirled around to look at the squirrel. It was their gym teacher. (gasps) Hi, Mr. Tuttles. Oh, hey, Little Hedgehog. Hey, baby. Little Hedgehog turned back. That was funny. But that wasn't what I was thinking. Okay, well, then maybe you were thinking that Pop BB began to sink towards the surface of the water. Her inner tube was rapidly deflating. She had popped it with her extremely strong, unusually prickly prickles. Ah! BB, I will rescue you! Little Hedgehog stuck a paw in the water and paddled herself over to her friend. BB was now bobbing gently thanks to her life jacket. Are you okay? I'm fine. This was to be expected. Little Hedgehog helped BB climb up on her inner tube. BB carefully kept her prickles from pressing against the inflatable surface. So what were you thinking about, Little Hedgehog? I was thinking, Little Hedgehog said, tracing a paw through the water, that we are mer hedgehogs now, BB. BB smiled. I believe we are. Hey, little hedgehog, do you think your dad might possibly be wondering where we... Little hedgehog, BB. Mr. Hedgehog stared down at little hedgehog and BB from his perch on a paddleboard. The music in the cave went silent. Because a bat had flown straight into the trumpet. The bat tumbled out cradling its head. Oops, sorry about that. The band struck up once more. Oh, hi, Dad. Salutations, Mr. Hedgehog. Uh Uh-huh. Little Hedgehog, you are supposed to tell me when you were planning to leave the burrow. Little Hedgehog blinked. Technically, there was no discrete point at which we left the burrow, Mr. Hedgehog. The tunnel was, in fact, connected to the burrow itself. So really, if you consider that Mr. Hedgehog held up a paw... Sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, Mr. Hedgehog. Dad sighed. (sighs) Don't do it again. 
Then he looked around in wonder. So, you found the tunnel, eh? This place used to be a jazz club. Weird. Wonder how they got all this water in here. Mr. Hedgehog, you used to frequent this establishment when it was a jazz club? Dad chuckled. Well, actually, I used to play the saxophone in my younger years. Little Hedgehog and BB's eyes went wide. For a moment, they both felt a glimmer of recognition that Mr. Hedgehog had, in fact, lived a previous life full of interesting adventures prior to becoming a dad. It faded quickly. I popped my inner tube mere minutes ago, Mr. Hedgehog. My prickles of steel just cannot be contained. It was pretty funny, Dad. You should have been there. Oh, sounds like it. Look, I'm going to let you two hang out in the water for a bit. Apparently, they also do taxes here, and I happen to have all my documents with me, so I guess I'll just get that taken care of. That makes sense, Dad. It makes total and complete sense to conveniently have that hedgehog prepare your taxes at this underground water recreational facility, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog paddled off to get his papers in order. Later, after the taxes were done and the tiny pads on their paws began to resemble little raisins, the three of them headed back into the tunnel. Do not fear, B.B. said. I have left a trail of little hedgehogs' collection of glow-in-the-dark marbles to guide our way home. She held up the now-empty marble pouch she'd taken from little hedgehog's bookcase. B.B., do you know what this means? B.B. opened her mouth to take a guess, but Dad cut in. Just tell us what it means, little hedgehog. Little Hedgehog and BB grinned. For the first time ever, I can recollect a collection. A recollection, if you will. What an honor to be collected not once, but twice by these prickly creatures. That's my glow in the dark marble voice, BB. Little Hedgehog and BB giggled. Dad smiled and put a paw on each of their shoulder prickles. The three of them made their way back to Little Hedgehog's burrow, collecting the marbles as they went. They made it back just as sunlight began to stream in the window. Antonio, please, just stop jumping. Antonio, there was one rule. Just one. Oh, I just got an email. Dear Rhea, your guest is interrupting our aromatherapy quiet time with his destruction of teacups. Please address immediately. Signed, the Studio Beatles and Spiders. Oh, I can see them up there with their tiny aromatherapy candles. That is not safe. They have actual candles up there. This is madness. I've got a camel cricket leaping all over the place, destroying these beautiful antique teacups that I just happen to have all over my studio for completely understandable reasons. And now I've got insects lighting candles in the corners of my studio. Look, friends, I've got to go. This totally unforeseen situation is not going to fix itself. I hope you loved the story. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Peter Kay runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Oh, (sighs) you can visit my website, www dot little stories tiny people.com to learn how to support the show and if you love the podcast please share it with a friend also i am at work on my second picture book featuring little hedgehog please go to my website and sign up for the email list 
so that you are the first to hear when it's available. Thank you so much to Simone for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to Z, Essie, Camille, Madison, and Sophie for the sound effects used in this story. And thank you, as always, for listening in. Ah, Antonio, let's get you back to the basement. 